Good day. We're here to present our Bioterm and project entitled Cellulase Production. So, cellulose is one of the many enzymes that are produced by multiple fungi, bacteria, and protozoans that catalyze the decomposition of cellulose and related polysaccharides that are found in plant cell walls into simple sugars. So, one of the raw materials used for the production of cellulose is biomass, to be specifically monocellulic biomass. This represents perhaps the only viable renewable alternative petroleum as a raw material for the production of fuels and chemicals in the future. The most, although commercial cellulose have improved significantly over the past decade, the enzymes remain a significantly over, significantly important over the past de decade. And the most common organism used for the production of cellulose is the mesophilic filamentous ascosomite famous trichoderma risae. So, the secretomes of conventional TRSA strains generally lack sufficient glucosidase and hemicellulose activities for the enzymes to perform well in the hydrolysis of pre-treated biomass. So, the production of cellulose is by TRSA. So, filamentous fungi are used for the commercial production of various metabolites. The main genera of filamentous fungi used in the industry are Trichoderma, Aspergillus, Penicillum, and Cephalosporin. So TRSA produces cellular proteins and cellulose is naturally in large quantities. Industrial TRSA strains have been obtained by using classical mutagenesis techniques to enhance the release of extra cellular proteins in general. Successful mutagenesis screening and process development has led to TRSA strains feasible for commercial cellulose production, but genetically modified strains have further been developed from the classical strains for various applications. So here's David for the process solution. Uh, so here you can see is our process flow sheet where we have three main units. Uh, first is where we grind the substrate cellulose into tiny um, particles. And then this is fed as a sterile feed into a barrier reactor. And then an inocula inoculation tank inoculates um, a few grams of per liter of cells, and then the product feed, the biomass is separated, and if possible, is recycled back to the bioreactor to produce our final product, which is cellulase. Uh, next is the mass balance. So, for a batch bioreactor, from our si simulation of the MATLAB code, we were able to determine that the maximum product yield was at the time of about 124 hours, and uh, therefore our our feed product compositions for the batch buyer actors are the feed needed is going to be about 15 kilograms uh, of initial product then for the substrate initial it's going to be about 7.5 metric tons biomass about uh, 2.25 metric tons and then the product that, that we're going to be harvesting is about 1.21 metric tons and the substrate is 1.3 metric tons and a biomass of 1.56 metric tons Based, in, based on a per day basis, assuming that we run the bi batch by reactor 24 hours, um, we have an input of three kilograms per day of cell. Uh, we have an input of three kilograms per day of cellulose as the initial product. Then uh, 1.5 metric tons per day of cellulose uh, substrate. Then uh, 435 kilograms per day of biomass input. And then our output capacity would be about 236 kilograms per day of, pro of our product. Um, 260 kilograms per day of substrate and 1.1 metric tons of per day of biomass. So for the CSTR, again from our simulation, we were able to determine the outgoing stream compositions of as follows. And then in a per day basis, our CSTR capacity is going to be, since it's a sterile feed, the only thing that's going to come in is 1.2 metric tons per day of cellulose. Um, an output of 194 kilograms per day of our product cellulase and then the output of 360 kilograms per day of cellulose and 1.2 metric tons per day of biomass. So following this is our uh, stoichiometric equation wherein here our main substrate is the cellulose but another carbon source is found in glycerin and it's an, I mean, it's an aerobic reaction with O2 and our nitrogen source is ammonium sulfate and another carbon source is from corn steep liquor 
and balances as follows. So for a fermentation medium, it has a concentration of 50 grams per liter of our initial, our, our main substrate, which is the microcrystalline cellulose, and the following concentrations for the others. So moving on to our biochemical rate equations, we have three equations, one for the biomass, uh, and another for the substrate, and another for the product. So here is the rate parameters that we got from our source. And using those parameters, we are able to determine and move on to our design of the bioreactor. So first, for the design of our batch bioreactor, the MATLAB codes are here as follows to aid us in the simulation and solving of simultaneous differential equations. And we were able to get the response of this. So from this graph, we were able to determine the time where in the maximum product concentration is going to be. So from there, we assume a, a reaction volume of 150 meter cube and height to diameter ratio of 1 with a liquid level about 80% of the total height. There, we were able to determine the inside diameter, the height of the liquid, and the total height of our uh, bioreactor. Then using the ASME, ASM UPV codes, we were able to determine our tank thickness and our head design using a tori, tori spherical head. Uh, the design pressure was from the hydrostatic pressure and the vapor pressure determined. Uh, then we, we were able to determine our tank, th tank thickness of about 3 millimeter, 3, millimeter, 3 millimeters, which is the commercially available, and then we were able to determine our head thickness of 4.5 millimeters. So we need, we need a rotational speed of agitation of about 200 revolutions per minute for our bioreactor. So from there, we were able to determine the power requirements by solving the impeller diameter, which is 1.9 meters. And then finally, we were able to solve the, the power required to steer it, which is about 366 kilowatts of power. <clears throat> so once again, from our simulation graph, we will determine the inlet concentration streams of this until to the 124th R, which is this the outgoing uh, composition. And then, the, like once again, here is the uh, amount that we need to put in and then the, the amount that we will be able to harvest. And here is the design summary of our batch bioreactor. So following the CSTR bioreactor design, here is Paulo Pagulsan. So now let us talk about the CSTR bioreactor design. So here we can see the MATLAB code and also the simulation figure from the code, the set code. Then for our design computations, we assume sterile and product free. We determine the dilution rate for the conversion of substrate to 70%. And we get a dilution rate of 6.8154 times theta negative 3 per R. Then we assume a desired rate of feed to be a thousand liter per R and we get a volume of uh, 146,726.9 liters or converted to 146.73 cubic liters. Then after that, we assume a height to diameter ratio of 1 and a liquid level to 80% of the total height. From that, we get the inside diameter, which is 5.7167 meters the height of the liquid, which is 5.7167 meters, and the total height, which is 7.1458. Using the ASME UPV code, we, we, we calculated for the thickness of the shell and the head. Uh, so for the thickness of the tank, we, we got a three, three, millimeter, three, milli, 3 millimeter thickness, which is commercially available, and the thickness of the head to be 4 millimeters. Then, assuming that the impeller have a rotational speed of 200 RPM, uh, we got a diameter of 1.906 meters. Then, from that, we, we get the power required, which is 354.0253 kilowatts, which is the steering power. Then, using the volumetric flow rate of uh, 1,000 liter per hour, 
we recommended a 6 inch schedule ATS pipe with, which has a diameter of 5.761 inches. Then assuming the pipe layout here, uh, the feed tank is 10 meters away from the reactor which has 490 90 degrees elbows present in the layout. There are also two gate valves, one swing check valve and one globe, globe valve. And the pump is located 3 meters away from the feed tank. Another is feed, the feed is extracted from the bottom of the feed, of the feed tank and supplied to the reactor to the top. From this, we determine the suction head, which is 4.8 to 7 to 5 meters, and a discharge head of 6.295337 meters. From that, we get the total dynamic head, and we get a power of 0.24 kilowatts, which is the pumping power. Then, from that, we get the product, the product concentration scheme of the product, the substrate, and the biomass. Then. Here is the design summary of the CSTR. Now let us move on to the plug flow by reactor design discussed by Mike Chu. Now for the plug flow by reactor design, um, here are the following MATLAB codes that we are going to be using. And using these uh, appropriate MATLAB codes, we are going to obtain this simulation figure. Now for our design computations, we assume that our bioreactor has followed the um, appropriate equations that are listed here. These equations were modeled in MATLAB to determine the length of the plug flow reactor needed to be for the maximum yield of product. Now, if we assume a uh, packing uh, void space of 0 0.5 and the PFR diameter of 8 meters, we are going to obtain a velocity of 0 0.019894368 meters per hour. From the graph, it was determined that maximum concentration can be achieved from the length of 10 meters. Now, here are our scaled engineering drawings. The first figure shows our scaled engineering drawing for our CSTR bioreactor with the appropriate dimensions for our bioreactor. The next shows our batch bioreactor, and again, we have um, shown the appropriate dimensions of our bioreactor. And finally, last is the, uh, the plug flow bioreactor, and the appropriate dimensions are labeled. Now, for our three dimensional depictions, um, we use the program SolidWorks to um, model our figures, and the first one shows our CSTR bioreactor, the second figure shows our batch bioreactor, and the third shows our plug flow reactor. Now for the estimation of capital cost, here is Mr. Topper Honrade. Now, for the estimation of the capital cost, so we determine the cost for each component for the batch and the, for the CSTR setup. So for the batch setup, we have the bioreactor and the agitator. So for the bioreactor, it's jacketed and agitated, and and the material used is stainless steel 304. And we're able to do, to calculate for the cost as $297,100. And now for the agitator costing, the, uh, the type of agitator is impeller, anchor, top entering, and the material used is stainless steel 304 and the cost is $69,700. For the CSTR, we have three components, the bioreactor, the agitator, and the pump. So for the bioreactor, it's also jacketed and agitated, and the material uses stainless steel 304, and the cost is $293,700. For the agitator, it's also impeller, anchor, top entering, and the material uses stainless steel 304, and the cost is $68,500. Lastly, for the pump, the pump type is diaphragm and then the material used is stainless steel 304 and the cost is $45,400. Now, for the waste management and environmental issues, here's my joke. Now, in design considerations, not only is it important to um, appropriate the design costs, but it's, it's also important to um, take into account the waste management and environmental issues of the said topic. So for waste management, the production of cellulose waste management is a very important aspect that should be also given importance to ensure that the waste is properly treated and managed. Cellulose ethanol production also generates highly diverse waste streams that carry an associated risk to human health and potential environmental harm. Cellulosic ethanol waste must be effectively managed if this energy source is to contribute to its potential. 
in the production of cellulase, there are many ag agricultural wastes that are also being produced. In most cases, these agricultural wastes can be used as fertilizers or to increase soil quality of some land. Now, the production of cellulase can lead to cellulosic ethanol waste materials. It is important to take note that cellulosic ethanol waste materials contain a variety of chemicals, viable biological microorganisms, and biologically derived proteins and toxins that have potential environmental consequences. Due to, the, due to the variety of harmful chemicals that are present within our cellulosic ethanol waste, it is imperative that we understand the, compos the composition of this cellulosic waste and decide and develop different approaches to ensure that those constituents that are potentially harmful to the environment and to the people are handled appropriately to minimize all risk. So thank you and have a great day. <coughs>